Fleming, thank you very much. My pleasure. Let's turn now to Disney expert John Colhane, once a writer at Newsweek. Uh, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much, David. How responsible was uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg for the revival of Disney? Oh, Jeffrey had a great, a great effect on the revival. And the number one thing he did, he brought back the animated musical. You know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, uh, Jerome Kern had said that uh, he thought Walt Disney was the most important thing happening in music in the 20th century. And that was because he carried on the Kern showboat idea of a seamless drama where the music put, uh, put the, the uh, story forward. Uh, Disney lost that animated musical approach. Uh, and for some years they floundered, and then when, when uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg came along, you remember for Oliver and Company, he had Billy Joel writing the score, and then he really put it together when he brought in Ashman and Mencken. Uh, he said someplace that uh, we have two guardian angels here, Walt Disney and Howard Ashman, and I think that the contribution of Howard Ashman, and this was... Uh, the Jeffrey, composer. Hmm? The composer. The composer. Right. Uh, Alan Mencken is the lyricist. I think that that contribution was to go back to the Snow White Pinocchio thing where great songs and great music move the story along. Now, that is the wonderful contribution he made, but of course this is being carried on. If uh, what he started will go on. If people have to move ahead or move on, as Eisner said of Katzenberg, does Disney as a company have to go some periodic transformation? Is making magic movies like Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King enough in today's economic environment? Sure. Uh, I, here's the thing. I think the Disney empire will survive the loss of Jeffrey Katzenberg, great as it is, and continue to flourish because Disney is, again, what Walt wanted it to be, which is personality-driven. And I don't mean the personality of Michael Eisner. I mean the personalities of Mickey Mouse and Aladdin's Journey and Mufasa the Lion King and the Little Mermaid and Belle and Beauty and the Beast. I noticed you led in to, uh, just today with the, sto with the song from Aladdin, Instant Recognition. Uh, I remember talking to you a few months ago, and you'd just seen Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. Well, you heard those kids. They, they, you know, I, I met Walt Disney 43 years ago this afternoon, spent the day at his house. And he said to me then, our most important aim is to develop definite personalities in our cartoon characters. Without a definite personality, a character can't be believed, and belief is what I'm after. You remember listening to those kids around you? They believed in the candlestick Lumiere, and they believed in Mrs. Potts, the Angela Lansbury teapot, and Cogsworth the clock. I've got a Cogsworth clock on my kitchen wall, and that translates into the consumer division, you know. And then we got the film division, and we've got the parks, but every place that you go, the Disney empire is personality-driven. And as long as they keep coming up with personalities that express the times, they're going to flourish. John Colhane, thank you very much. You're welcome. We've been talking about the departure of longtime Disney executive Jeffrey Katzenberg and the questions that it has raised about the health and direction of Disney as an entertainment giant. On the line, correspondent Charles Fleming in Los Angeles, where Newsweek on Air is heard on KBIG, and John Colhane, a Disney authority who I guess vaguely remembers once encountering the great master Walt. He spoke with us from his home in Dobbs Ferry, New York, where we can be heard on WNYC. Thanks to both again. Next to Periscope, when we return with more Newsweek. Week on air.